What's going on everybody? Today we're gonna to be going over 8.5b, which is atomic identity. Identify that protons determine <clears throat> an element's identity and valence electrons determine its reactivity. So we're gonna talk about a couple of those things today. I'm gonna to show you some stuff on the board, hopefully. <coughs> hopefully it helps. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, allergies, my bad. All right, so this is a little bit of a, of a review. Let's look at um, carbon on the periodic table. It is number six. So I'm gonna do the symbol of carbon. It is number six. So remember that if it is number six, we know that the atomic number is six. So that number tells us how many protons it has and how many electrons it has. That, you need to understand that fully at this point, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. And we're gonna move on and do some other things here. So let's continue to look at carbon. And I'm gonna draw the box of carbon here. I'm gonna draw the symbol. I'm gonna put six here and 12 here. Yes, so let's look at this really quickly. Um, we see a six and a 12 we need to understand what's going on in this box. We know that this six here is going to be the atomic number, and we know that this here is gonna be the mass. And so we need to know that the, if the mass is 12 and it has six uh, protons, how many neutrons does it have? Well, there's the strategy that we have M minus A equals N. So the mass, which in this case is 12, minus the atomic number, which is six, gives us six as the neutrons. So we know in the atom's nucleus, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw that now. This is just for, um, drawing purposes, we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six protons. And we also have one, two, three, four, five, and six neutrons. Okay, that's inside the nucleus of our atom. All right, so a little bit of that is, is review at this point. So now we need to, we're, we're now gonna draw a Bohr diagram so we can um, understand this stuff a little bit better. Let's do mag, uh, magnesium number 12 on the periodic table. So at this point, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw my nucleus and I'm going to say, I'm gonna do a little information in my head here. I'm gonna look at it, it's number 12 on the periodic table. It's in group two right here. Mg, so I'm just going to put Mg just for identity purposes right there. And it says it has the, um, the atomic number is 12 and the mass is 24 because we round. So 24 minus 12 is, that's right, it is 12. So we know in my nucleus now, I have protons equal 12. And I have neutrons equaling 12. For a total of 24, that's my mass, okay? So now I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna draw some uh, orbitals. And it's in row three. So I have three orbitals that I have to draw. Two and three. Don't be confused with the nucleus. The nucleus is what it is. There's three orbitals here. There's a rule of 288. And this information is coming soon. Uh, I'll be doing a, um, uh, a video on breaking down the periodic table. This is just to give you some information. So 288. What that means is the first two, the first two, um, let's go with blue. Electrons are gonna go in the first orbital. The first orbital cannot hold any more electrons. So up to eight need to go in the second orbital. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and eight for a total of 10. How many electrons does magnesium have? If you were to ape it out, what would you find? Well, atomic number is 12, so we know that it has 12 protons and it also has 12 electrons. We've drawn 10 so far because 2 plus 8 is 10, and this one has 12, so I have two more electrons I have to do, so they will sp spill out onto the next orbital. That is a Bohr diagram for magnesium, okay? There's a good example, um, so you can use this video going forward for that. The last thing I want to go over is how the periodic table is organized, okay? So I'm going to pull this up a little bit just to get a little closer so we can, we can look at this here. I, what I would do if I were you is definitely look at your periodic table so it makes sense. I'm going to get this out of the way, and here we go. So as we're looking at our periodic table here, we see... Actually, let me pull that even closer. We'll just look at it like this. Um, we have these columns that go down, also called um, uh, GFC. It's uh, Columns, Families, and Groups. That's the, it's the same name. You know how, um, you know, house, home, uh, you know, it's, it's like, Things have the same name or have different names, but the same thing. So it's the, we can, they can be identified as being called columns or groups or families, but it's the part that goes up and down on the periodic table. So you can see the number one here, the hydrogen group. That is group one. And number two here next to it is group two. And then we skip this whole area here. These are the transition metals. We're not going to worry about those. But we're going to look at group three, group four, five, six, seven, and eight. Group eight is the noble gases. Okay. Um, how whatever group it's in, it tells you how many um, how many valence electrons it has. And valence electrons are the electrons in the outer orbital. So for if we go back to that um, drawing I did just a minute ago with magnesium. How many electrons were in that outer orbital? Two. And guess what group it's in? Group two. So beryllium also has two valence electrons. So let's take a look. I'll draw beryllium. Beryllium, B, E. Beryllium is number four on the periodic table. So we know that it has four protons. But its mass is 9. So let's do man in our head. Mass minus atomic number, 9 minus 4, gives us our neutrons, which is 5. Okay? And now, it also has, we know for ape, that if it has 4 protons, it has 4 electrons. So let's draw our electron cloud now. Do 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 one two. We're gonna need two orbitals. Remember, we have ape, or we have two eight eight. Meaning, the first two electrons that there are go in the first orbital. Okay, and remember that beryllium has four, so we have to do two more next orbital. Doesn't matter where they go. You can place them anywhere. For a total of four electrons, how many valence electrons are there? Two, because you count the electrons in the outer orbital. And the valence electrons tell you what group it's in. It's that easy. So there are eight important groups on the periodic table. Um, some of them have, have names, in fact. This one is the, um, al this is the alkali metals, group one. Alkali earth metals, group two. Group eight is our noble gases. 
And those are just a few of the important um, groups. They call um, group four the carbon group. So yeah, some of, these, um, some of these groups have names. Just like families, we have family names. Mine's Camacho, yours is, whatever it is. Um, these groups are really, really important. They give us a lot of information. They tell us uh, an atom's reactivity because notice, and I'm sure you've already fi figured this out, a lot of these things combine to make stuff. H2O, hydrogen, um, two hydrogen, one oxygen. That gives us water uh, molecule and those combine together to make that. So these elements will group together based on their reactivities, and their reactivity is found based on their valence electrons. So more information to come on this. Just wanted to give you a little uh, information today to catch up, maybe fill some gaps. At this point, you should have a pretty good understanding of 8.5a, um, which is right here. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Describe the structure of atoms, including masses, charges, and locations of protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons in the electron cloud. Um, and there is one other thing I wanted to talk about about that, and that is this. We're talking about charges. So um, if you're looking at your periodic table and you're seeing these um, elements, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, um, neon, you might be asking yourself, hmm, self, what is the charge of the nucleus of those atoms? I have an easy way for you to remember. So all you have to do is identify the protons. So if you're looking at, let's look at fluorine on the periodic table, number nine, group seven, that group, that group's name is the halogens. Um, you can see that it is number nine, meaning it has nine protons. And so you should already know your charges of your subatomic particles. Protons are positive, electrons are negative, and neutrons are neutral. So in the subatomic um, nuclei, there are two different type of particles, protons and neutrons. There's only one of those that has a charge because neutrons are neutral, also meaning no charge, so what that means is since they do, do not provide a charge, the protons do, so all nuclei are positively charged. So to finalize that, fluorine, F, the ape, is nine, okay? So it has nine protons. The charge of the nucleus of fluorine is plus nine, positive nine. All charges of nucleus are positive. And that is it, my friends. And that wraps up 8.5a review and 8.5b, uh, which is atomic identity. We'll see y'all very soon. Ciao.